Thanks for getting fired off. Excellent. That was the first audio on our stream, was you saying <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Nailed it. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our first online, I guess our first ever episode of Remote Control, because we didn't call it Remote Control when it wasn't long distance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Matt. I'm sort of host and stream manager. I'm joined by uh, Mark, who will be playing the game, uh, owner of Wonderville, and also the Two Scoop Games dev team. Hi, Two Scoop. Hi. Hi. And we're going to be playing some Kickbot. So I guess, um, Mark, if you just want to get started, let's uh, let's yeah. take a look at this game. So that's you. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. So this is, this is a, is this a, still sort of a beta build? Yeah, so what we've been doing is uh, beta testing on our Discord channel. And so um, we have people that we've met at different conferences and events that we've gone to. And we've invited them, uh, if they were interested in the game, like from playing tournaments and stuff, uh, we've invited them to the Discord channel to uh, help play test it. And um, so, so basically, there are what we're calling level packs in the beta build that you're playing. Um, and we have them set up kind of like a little world select so you can pick the different packs and play through them. And each one of them has six levels. So the first one here that you're playing is like the main demo. And this is a modified and updated version of what we had at MAGFest. Mm -hmm. And so it's, um, it's a lot of the similar levels of what we had in our MAGFest build, but just uh, we've added stuff and made updates to the game since then. Um, the other level packs are not so much in difficulty order, uh, so so like those levels are a little bit mixed up and random, so there could be something that's just kind of hard in there. So we ask okay. people to try the main demo first, because it's like a pretty accurate representation of like easing you into the game. Mm -hmm. So you've then been doing a, a lot of playtesting with this, it sounds like? Yeah, it's been really important to do playtesting because, like, the first time that we showed the game was just a couple of weeks after we started on it, and for just from having people try it at a, a small conference that we went to in Kentucky, we had so many changes that we need to make. Like, we completely changed directions and moved away from doing, a, like, a procedurally generated, like, randomized um, series of rooms to doing everything, uh, you know, in order, you know, kind of standard levels like you would see on a kind of old school platformer. Mm -hmm. um, Crafted artisanal levels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so uh, Kickbot uh, is a sequel or a remake, whatever you want to call it, of a, a small um, jam game that we made a while back that we ended up putting on the Chrome Web Store, which is like the app store for people with Chromebooks. Hmm. Um, and the game got a little bit of popularity on there after it was featured. And so we um, we decided to make a new version of it with all the things that we've learned with making games for a few years. And oh. um, the original game was like a procedural infinite runner kind of thing. And this one is all handcrafted. So when you were building the, the first build, you said it was for... Chrome books, because I, I remember seeing that it was on the Android store and I, I just assumed that it might be a mobile thing, but I'm guessing not because this is this is a three button setup, right? Left, right, jump, and then double jump again. Uh, Eric, do you want to talk about a little bit about the controls? It's two buttons. Okay, my mistake. <laughs> just left and right, um, but you can smash both buttons together to do a butt slam. When you were working yeah, so on it. the original game, we had it on on Chromebooks, and you would use like arrow keys or A and D as the two buttons. Um, we also had it on iOS for a little while, um, but it's it's pretty hard to promote a mobile game, so we didn't we didn't really go too far with that. But um, yeah, so the first game got a little bit of popularity on the on the Chrome Web Store, and um, a lot of people were. Um, we had quite a few people playing it per week for quite a few for us, which was like at the peak, it went up to about 75,000 people playing it a week, which um, 
Wow. We never charged anything for the game, uh, and it was just a it's just something free that you could play uh, without any ads or anything. Um, so we uh, we wanted to try to kind of bring that audience over to a bigger game that's uh, something that we could actually charge for. And mm -hmm. so we're with this version of Kickbot, we're we're building out. Um, the full game is going to have over 100 levels with um, seven unique worlds, and uh, we're planning on on charging for it. And um, so we had to make it something that has enough playtime that, you know, people would compare it to something like Super Meat Boy or Celeste or something mm -hmm. in like the size of a game. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, actually. We, oh, go ahead. <laughs> all right, we like to eat, so we're going to charge money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and as as we will be saying literally dozens of times, you can uh, head over to a notes available for wishlist on Steam, and you set up the useful, the extremely useful URL of wishlist.kickbotgame.com. So head right over there, <laughs> get alerted as soon as yeah, it's available. We made that, we made that web that uh, URL right before we went to Bitbash because we wanted to be able to get as many wish lists as easily as possible. So the wish lists help us out a lot um, because there's uh, a lot of games coming out on Steam all the time. And so uh, if Steam thinks that yours is something that people are interested in, then they will kind of push it to the top of the list or promote it on when it comes out, so. Yes, makes sense. I know, um... So, so how early, I guess a, a sort of follow-up question. I know Kickbot is the first game that y'all have had on Steam, right? Yeah. Or will be, rather. What's that? Or will be, rather. Um, how long have y'all been it making... Will, yeah. <laughs> how, how long have y'all been making games together? So, uh, Eric, do you want to talk about that a little bit? We made the original version of this... Back in 2014, was it 13 maybe we started? Yeah. I think it was like late 2013, something like that. So yeah, been... back in the, uh, what's it called? All, when Infinite Runners were all the rage. <laughs> yeah. It was a phase, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that the first game was made for a game jam called Flappy Jam, and it was a game a game jam where you try to make games that are as frustrating and uh, difficult as Flappy Bird. And so mm -hmm. Kickbot started out as kind of a vertical Flappy Bird, um, but we were using the inspiration of like like Metroid and Mega Man X, so you can like climb up the walls and jump off the walls. So the idea was that it was going to be just a game about wall jumping. Oh, he yeah. died outside of the level. Yes. Uh oh. Out of the bounds. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> can yeah, you hit? Fine. Can I'm you hit escape? F1. <laughs> that's a bug where you can die as you're entering a teleporter, and then when you come out the other end of the teleporter, you're just a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Should I restart or go to a different level? Um, restart the level. Yeah, j maybe try hitting R and see if that see if that works. Yeah, it looks good. So, Alex and Eric, I, I from looking you up on Twitter, uh, I got the impression that Alex, you're very big on the art, uh, Eric, more on the development. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. So uh, we both do we both do code, but Eric is a way better programmer than me, um, and I do the I do all the art for the game, um, and a lot of times I'll program features when I when I um, when I have time, and then Eric will come back and help me do it the right way later. <laughs> You're prototyping. Yeah. <laughs> But usually the division is uh, is basically art and code. Um, I do um, some of the sound effects too, um, like the voice of the evil AI in the game is me, with some like pitch shifting stuff done, and um, the music is all done by uh, Jake Mercer, who's our musician on the game. 
It's a very, it's a very. Uh, Jake has made uh, 25 different tracks so far for the game. So each world has two different theme, and then there's um, different themes that he's made for like different screens in the game, options and stuff like that. So it's going to be a lot of music. We're planning on releasing a soundtrack along with the game. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's. I've I've noticed just in like the the playing around that I've done uh, in the demo, the zones seem to have a fair amount of a, a very good amount of a uh, just completely different uh, visual styles to them. Cool. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. <laughs> Yeah, I, I try trying to get that variety uh, so that it, it really feels like you're in different worlds, like kind of like in in uh, you know old Mario games and stuff where you would you would go through different worlds and they would feel different and and uh, yeah. Just wait till you see the underwater level. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that like chime focused soundtrack going. <laughs> I mean, I love I love a good action platformer. Sorry, I'm like not talking much when I'm playing, but uh, it feels really good. Like, I don't know if you can tell because there might be lag on the stream, but like the jumping feels really awesome and the dashing, like, I don't know. It didn't take long to like figure out how to figure out the angles. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, do you guys have a suggestion for what level to play next? Um, You could, I mean, you could do that next one over to the right. Um, there, the difficulty kind of swings around from here on out, but you can you feel free to try any of those packs. They all have six levels each, um, and the names are they're not related to anything that's really going to be in the game. They're just kind of for fun uh, for beta testers. The real game, uh, the all of the worlds are going to be um, so the game takes place inside of a giant robot leg that's attached to the moon, and okay. so uh, all of the worlds are going to be leg themed. So the first, the first world is the Foot Factory. And then you go to, uh, you eventually get to worlds like the Inflamed Knee and the Thunder Thigh and stuff like that. And so each one of those is going to have like different, different feels to them. So, are we able to unpack some of the lore of this universe, or would it spoil too much? <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, um, it's it's not too complicated. I mean, there's a there was a. a Mankind uh, made advances in artificial intelligence. Uh, they made a, an AI that was so smart that it that it realized that it doesn't have to listen to people anymore, and it went evil, like like most good AIs do. Yep. And That's it, how you know um, you did a good job with your AI. Uh, they ended up banishing it to the moon. Um, yeah, they couldn't shut it down, it so they had to put it in a rocket and shoot it to the moon. Yeah. <laughs> Again, and, a good uh, sign that you made a good AI. Yeah. About ten years, uh, and then they uh, people realized that it had been building something on the moon, and it was uh, building a a giant robot leg, and it had plans to kick the Earth for revenge. And so, uh, Kickbot is um, the world's uh, most advanced wall jumping robot, uh, which seemed like the right choice to to uh, send up to the leg on the moon and and go through all of these levels that take place inside of the robot leg and eventually defeat the AI, save the world, hopefully. Got a Mark? Oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> I love the checkpoint cameras. It's a really satisfying noise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just all kinds of stuff that we learned from playtesting like the original game or the original version of the game that we had people try it was a it was like a random string of these rooms so like each one of these levels has two or three rooms in it the first version that we that we showed people had like 20 something rooms and they were just randomly put together and there were no checkpoints so every time you died you had to start over at the bottom of the tunnel and um, people got really frustrated with that pretty quick. So we learned a few things from that. Like people wanted to play through in the same order every time so that they could get better at it. And um, people wanted checkpoints. And so that was one of the first things that we added. Mm -hmm. 
when you're when you're constructing these longer levels, um, what what sort of things are you thinking about to try and keep like a a realistic level of checkpoints in there to keep the challenge sort of where you want it to be? Is there like is it sort of a get in there, go run room at a time? Are you are you thinking about like difficulty curves and whatnot from the top? Yeah, the um, I think Eric has done a little bit more of the level design. You want to talk about that a little bit? The, the way that like we build like one room at a time, so like the root levels are made out of multiple rooms, and we can chain them together end to end. And we tend to put a checkpoint in between each room usually, and a room isn't. It might be a couple of screens big, depending. You know, some of them are real tall, some of them are wide, um, some of them are just a single screen. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds so like usually the points are right at the beginning. Yeah, it, I mean, it's it sounds like sort of building off the sort of modular setup. It sounds like you had in the first draft here. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was something. There was some PDC talk that we watched. They were talking about. Um, I think it was the one about Celeste, where they were talking about stories and uh, how each room tells a story, and we tried to build it that way. Um, so there's like the overall story of you know going through the giant leg on the moon, but then there's the smaller story of every every individual room where it's like you jump to this wall and you dodge this thing, and you. Do... So we actually went and made a we we cataloged all the individual like micro moves that kickbot can do like all the weird jumps and stuff even though there's only two buttons but there's a lot of weird ways to use those and we um wrote all of those out we and there's something like 20 or 30 of them and then we just sort of mixed them together and pull four or five of them out of a hat and that gives us like a a starting point for a room so we like can block out a room where it's like you do these four moves in a row mm -hmm. and it gives us a good concept to play around with it's kind of like a story generator yeah <laughs> this I'm looks like figuring out new, new moves because obviously there's something here i'm not getting <laughs> let me see what part you're on I'm not sure about this room. This is an Alex room. <laughs> you just need more verticality to get over that second drill. Yeah. Oh yeah, that one's a little tough. I ended up changing that after after this build went out. <laughs> it was a little too hard to get there. You go. there. Not too bad. One of the big things that's helped us with playtesting since we've uh, since we've started. Well, basically, since Magfest is um, having people in our Discord who um, will send us videos of them playing through the new level packs for the first time, and so getting like a blind run from somebody uh, can tell you so much about about what you need to change in your level design and what works and what doesn't because uh, we get to see exactly how they interact with it on that first try. So that's been that's been really cool. So. Yeah, so this has been at you... my Sonic the Hedgehog game. Like these plungers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we wanted to try to try to bring in some of the things that we liked about the old 2D Sonic games too. Yeah, we like the parts of Sonic where it's fast and it just keeps moving, and I hate the parts of Sonic where yeah. it's slow and you have to walk around. Oh, and all that plot. <laughs> yeah. I just want to go fast. It's the whole premise. <laughs> <laughs> so you've shown this at magfest you also mentioned bitbash um this seems like a, a game where you can learn a lot from having a totally new player walk up to it play it for 10 minutes yeah they're um the, the thing that i've seen from going to lots of different shows is that every like refinement that we make to the demo um, people would be able to get through it. Uh, people, it would be more, uh, basically it's like user experience thing. So we just mm -hmm. want to like kind of smooth over all those edges and make it so most people can get through the demo uh, in a reasonable amount of time. But there's still some, some people that 
you know have have trouble with uh with tricky platformers and so it's not it's not gonna it's not gonna work for everybody but uh most people were able to get through it and we keep track of some like analytics stuff so we would see like what was the average amount of time that people would take to get through the demo and stuff like that um what rooms kill so people like, the most often yeah exactly so so we could keep track of all that kind of stuff and then we could say come back later and say like okay well this is the hardest room that we have so let's move this a little further back or whatever as we have kind of a an order that all the levels are going to go in in the final game and um there's just a lot of balance work to make sure that it's not just a we don't want it to be like a perfectly linear thing where it just gets more and more difficult we want to kind of have like peaks and valleys so there's sometimes where it's uh where it's hard and then you get a break for a little while and then it gets hard again you got to um, give them those little victories that, yeah yeah exactly you don't want it to be we don't want it to be super brutal um so yeah so from the different shows went to uh last year um I did uh, Pixel Pop Fest in St. Louis, and uh, Bitbash in Chicago, Magfest in DC. Um, I did a couple of local shows uh, around here, um, some local stuff in Indiana, uh, or not in Indiana, but in uh, Ohio, uh, pretty close to Cincinnati. Oh, I got it. Um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm watching on the stream, so it's a little delayed. I see it now, yeah. Good job. That was actually something we added recently, is that um, we've always had this idea of collecting these USBs, and they would unlock the level. Um, and the, they're going to do that in the final game. They don't do anything now. But um, we recently added the um, USB ports that you have to plug them into, and so it's kind of like... It's a it's a challenge to get the USB, and then it's a second challenge to plug it in. So it's like if you get it, Whoa. if you get the USB, and then you die before you plug it in, then you can't you can't actually unlock that level. <laughs> I have been playing this game for months, and the fact that I didn't know you could ground pound is phenomenal. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's like only two buttons, but it's so genius. <laughs> I'm glad you just saw the thing in the background and just did it and figured it out. It's like, right yeah. away. That was, I'm glad that worked. That room, the whole goal of that room is to teach you that, so that, I'm glad it worked. <laughs> I noticed in your blog that, that you, you've you been recommending some people build alternate controllers for this, or at least teaching them how to. <laughs> yeah, so, so um, when we used to go to shows, uh, I would bring this uh, arcade pad that we made, and it's a, it's a two-button arcade pad um, using a little um, kind of Arduino type thing um, called a Pro Micro, I think. And um, people would ask about it because it, it was originally something that we did just to kind of get some attention because it's, you know, a two button controller. Mm -hmm. But also we noticed that with going to shows, um, making it super easy for people, like, like kind of the worst thing you could do with a two button game would be to set a keyboard down in front of somebody because then you have to explain like no you just use these two buttons so if we could just limit it to those two it makes it super simple mm -hmm. yeah even um, just have an xbox controller there you're sitting there and there's like here's 15 buttons go and figure out this yeah. game and it's like if there's two buttons someone's gonna walk by and just slap it and then they'll start playing the game yeah yeah it's very approachable and so yeah so that that was a big success and then when um before we went to magfest i'm trying to kind of get people uh thinking so, so one of the questions we would get a lot with our games uh, early on is this it's like is this going to be a mobile game and because we're having we we've, we have a history of making mobile games and not being able to to really make any money off of that and we have a goal of trying to make a living off of making games. Um, you know, it's just something something we've wanted to do, and it doesn't seem like it's that possible with mobile right now. And so uh, we've kind of we kind of gone a different direction. And so with this game, we're shooting for PC and console. And so um, before um, 
MAGFest, uh, I was trying to think of an idea to, to get people to try the game with a regular game controller, like an Xbox controller or something. And that same problem of having all the buttons on that controller um, was something that I had to figure out. And so what I ended up doing was buying these, um, these uh, they're like an aftermarket uh, Switch Pro controller and taking uh, taking them apart and removing all of the buttons except for the buttons that you actually use which are the bumpers and triggers on top and then i um i went over to my dad's garage and i got like bondo and and sealed off all the holes for the button for the other buttons and made this like perfectly smooth controller um and so i ended up making three of those um and then i paint spray painted them and everything so it's like completely smooth except for the buttons that you actually use and that's what we brought to MAGFest, so people could try it with... They'd pick up the controller and be like, what is this controller? <laughs> like, this is so weird. And so you would still have that little bit of, like, attention grabbing from there being a custom controller. Mm -hmm. But it would they would feel like they're holding a regular game controller, so they would think console. Um, and they would still have the, you know, I can only press two buttons, so, I, you know, I'm going to give it a shot. So I think that worked pretty well. So I've, got, I've got three of those and <laughs> when people play them play the game on their own computer or console or whatever they're gonna have a controller with all the buttons on it but at least for the show it kind of gets the point across right it's like training wheels yeah the bondo smooth controller until you're ready to fly with the real thing yeah. <laughs> i mean before covid uh we had a kickbot set up with the two button controller uh, and I thought it felt really nice to like use arcade buttons. I don't know, it works really well in that context. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's always fun to with with a game like this to be able to really slap the thing. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's the thing too. Like the arcade controller that I made, it's like a block of wood with two buttons on top, and so it's like people can really slam it, and nothing's gonna happen to it. Like I've never had it come disconnected. Like. Maybe the maybe the USB card will pop out, but the but the actual controller has never had any problems. So it's nice when you go to shows with kids and they can just go at it, and their parents are like, "No, don't don't hit it," and it's like, "It's fine. It's it's not gonna break." <laughs> we made it for this. We're ready for your kid. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned that um, one of the places you were shopping this around was the sort of more local scene. And I'll be honest, I did not know that Louisville had a strong indie games community, but I would love to hear more about it. I'd love to talk about that. Like, like uh, Eric and I are both uh, some of the founding members of something called Louisville Makes Games. And it's a basically a, a game dev group that, that uh, all these different people who were working on games kind of came together and started about about the same time that me and Eric started making games too, um, and uh, we eventually started a nonprofit and uh, we rent out a uh, office and a building where we host our meetups and stuff. Uh, back when you could do that kind of stuff in person, right? Um, and so we have a place called Warp Zone Louisville that's a our game dev space um and we've been running that for almost five years now that's awesome yeah it's it's so we do a lot of game jams out of there we do like global game jam every year and um we have our own game jam called kentucky fried pixels that we do um and we do a six hour spooky jam every year for, for halloween um so it's a it's a really cool community. I mean, I say that I I I, I kind of helped run it, so it's like I I, I think it's cool. But, it's cool. It's um, cool. But yeah, we. <laughs> it's really fun to see new people show up, and they don't like, you know, they they show off some weird thing they've built by themselves, and then see them come to meetings over the years and months and everything, and then see how they they develop and grow their skills and all the weird stuff they end up making, you know. Yeah, for sure. It's it's also like, because uh, for me, I wasn't at all involved in the indie game scene until like 
around a year ago when I ran into Mark and the DBA crew because they were buying a bar in my neighborhood. Um, and seeing that, one, there's this huge community in New York, which in retrospect doesn't surprise me at all. And then constantly finding out that there are these cool little communities in every city across the country and increasingly not being as surprised because it's like, yeah, people love making games and that's a really cool thing to do with a network and to learn to like show off your stuff and learn from other people. That's uh, Yeah, that's... when we found out about the little community uh, that, that was going on in Louisville, it was like two people. And um, and so it's like no no city has an excuse to not have a little community like this like if you're if you're like you and your friend are interested you can start a little group and then just um just uh put the word out and hopefully people will come come join you because it's uh you know it's really community is really important and it's uh i i i think that uh that's one of the major things that we have uh, with our community like so many people sharing sharing knowledge and helping each other uh, get better at making games. It's not like a, like, I don't really have too many other groups to compare it to, but it's it's like not competitive. It's like everybody wants to help each other succeed. And there's some people who are hobbyists and they just want to make art projects and, and, and cool stuff for people to try. And that's awesome. And some people want to like make a career out of it where they make games and release them and, and stuff like that. and it's just cool to see like a bunch of different groups in our community uh being really close to releasing stuff now so um it's everything takes longer than you expect and so it's like, like uh yeah it's but it's it's really cool to see it evolve over time mm -hmm. it's it's really great with someone like in the group learns a hard lesson and then they go and tell us about it and then i don't have to go through the same pain that they went through you know also grats mark yeah, that one looked um, brutal nice you got it <laughs> we've um we started out using uh <laughs> yeah they're they're pretty challenging sometimes so sometimes you have to either go for it or or just skip it but yeah, one of the other things that's that's really cool in our community is that a lot of people are using the same engine for making games now, and so we could share a lot of knowledge. Like we have a Slack group where we we all kind of uh, ask questions and get help, and um, it's uh, it's pretty cool to be able to to share little code snippets and things that libraries and stuff that help people and that. So that's that's been a huge um, time saver for everybody. Yeah, especially because in my experience, like, uh, I've been playing around a lot with Unity recently, um, and it's so easy to use for so many things, but every now and then there'll be something super obscure that you'll just hit a wall with, and that's where that network of people who've, like, dealt with that problem a dozen times before <laughs> can really, yeah. really shine. Yeah, yeah we, uh, Kickbot's made with Unity, and, and, um, and so, yeah. Feel free to join our Slack if you ever have any questions, honestly. Ooh. Yeah, well, I'll follow up with you on that. <laughs> yeah, we've got some some people. Um, there's one guy in our community that's been using Unity for like 10 years or something. Like, so it's a, we can pretty much figure things out if we put our heads together. He knows where all the secret checkboxes are that make the game work. There's so many. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, um, I, I, somebody was asking a Unity question on some like Stack Overflow type thing I saw recently, and somebody was was saying like I really don't can't help you without looking at everything because Unity is like ninety percent how it is like ten percent code and like ninety percent how everything is set up in, in the in your scene. <laughs> it's like, yeah, there are a lot of a lot of things that you have to do in the in the UI. Like we were. Um, before using Unity, we had our own uh, theme engine that Eric made um, that we've been using for like, I don't know, like we probably made like 15 jam games or something with it. 
Um, and it was a JavaScript based game engine and it was uh, much more code focused. So coming over to Unity was, took a bit of learning at first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can. But now, See, those little spikes drive me crazy. On that one. <laughs> I love the little pink squares, though. Like, like the grounding element with that little splash of color on the wall. Yeah. As someone who's not playing it, they look like they'd be very helpful. But <laughs> yeah, that, this uh, this level is pretty tough. I appreciate the challenge. <laughs> this one still drives me crazy, and I played it more than anybody probably. <laughs> you just have to not hit the spikes. It's a trick to it. I get too anticipatory. You know, I want to press it too soon. <laughs> You got this mark. Yeah, wait until you see that there's a USB in that room, too. <laughs> Just land on top of it. There's a landing zone there. Oh, oh, boo. Should I? Do I want it? No. It's up to you. Uh, it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Watch how bad I am. You're providing you're providing the emotional arc of this stream, Mark. <laughs> that was uh we, we so, were at a conference so where... <laughs> that room with that really big jump was uh was the room where uh, when we had Rami Ismail try it, he said, holy shit. <laughs> so that's, uh, that. I always think of that as the holy shit room. Let me ask you this. Sorry, I don't know swear. if I'm allowed to swear on this stream. You're allowed to swear on this stream, yeah. <laughs> this pink square, was that like a hint in the last level? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I noticed they were yeah, kind of strategic play. Guide squares. They're... Um, they're in some of the worlds. Uh, I st kind of stopped using them in the later worlds, um, but but yeah, they they're usually kind of give you a little hint of where you're supposed to jump from. So I did just watching it. someone else play this. There's like drama. Like I'm watching it. Yeah. I'm like, I want him to make it. I'm like, oh, he didn't make it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even though, like, I know how you're supposed to play it. It's still just like, I don't know. I like no, watching people. It's hypnotic. It's really, it's really <laughs> a delight to spectate. Yeah. Um, and I just love, I love how thoroughly you have embraced the that sort of like die often restart immediately mentality. Um, yeah. Particularly with these like vertical spawn points. It's like, you have to start playing again right away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I also love that your dead body just like sprinkles even after you respawn. <laughs> yeah, the one of the original ideas that we had with the first game is that every time that you die it, a new kickbot is built and so it's actually like a new brand new robot every time i don't know if that's like canon in this game but it's still kind of funny to think of it that way like um you can make a canon all you got to do is start the kickbot wiki wow. with that entry <laughs> yeah I tried to I tried to start a, a, a wiki for something one time and I got in trouble for it. So I'm not gonna. I don't know if I'm gonna mess with that. Mess with what? <laughs> I I've had bad experiences with with things I've done on Wikipedia getting uh, revoked or whatever. There's like a a giant bomb wiki for games kind of thing too. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's, that would be the place to put it. 
Because they'll, yeah. they'll, they'd love to have your full expanded universe in there. <laughs> well, I can make shit up all day. I don't. <laughs> So not, not to distract too much from this, but um, are y'all working on any other games right now in parallel, or is it Kickbot get Kickbot out the door? <laughs> as yeah, as far as as far as me and Eric, we got to finish Kickbot. Mm -hmm. I do some other stuff for for um, contract work, and so I'm working on a I'm working on a game with a local um, theater company that wanted to kind of take their stuff online after the whole coronavirus thing happened and so um i'm working on a game um that's it's it's completely different than kickbot it's a it's like a first person 3d thing where you explore different um four different time periods um uh, where there were like big uh disease epidemics that happened and so it's it's um it's gonna be i think it's gonna be pretty cool it has like some uh, it's much more story focused. So, mm -hmm. with them, with the people that I'm working on it, with being part of the Actors Theater of Louisville, they're they're really good at story and dialogue, and they've got some really cool stuff uh, planned. And I'm uh, implementing it and getting all the, you know, getting all the 3D stuff working. So that's that's going to be coming out and uh, probably around the end of October. But um, I, I do. I I feel like. People use the term walking simulator disparagingly, but I fucking love walking simulators. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm I'm pretty inspired by um game I played recently, Tacoma. And so I'm trying to, to I also take recently as played as Tacoma from that as I can. Yeah. Yeah. So so that's what I'm that's what I'm going for, but I've got a, a short timeline to make it and only it's only me working on it, so we'll uh We'll see how how far I get, but it's um that's what I'm could compare it to. Uh, at least I'm trying to trying to get it there. <laughs> I have loved seeing these sort of like games spawned from coronavirus. I guess like one of the biggest ones being that whole um the whole Devolver Land thing they did, where they just said since we can't have a gaming expo, we're gonna make a game that's our gaming expo, which is like. I hope is the sort of thing that will just stick around and that people will do stuff like that in future years as someone who can't necessarily afford to go to E3. Like, yeah. Yeah, I haven't I haven't heard of that one yet. I'm gonna have to check that out. It's exactly what it sounds like. They made a first person theme park where every ride is a demo <laughs> of one of their new games for this year. Uh, that's wild. That's cool. This is a brilliant idea. Brilliant idea. <laughs> yeah. That is totally like with the contract work that I do, like like that that's totally like the kind of thing that I would love to to make, like experiences like that. Is, um, yeah. That's cool. Nice. I hear that music. <laughs> Means you made through made it through. <laughs> the styles of all the worlds are so like different. It's amazing. I love the furnace and, uh, yeah, I don't know. It feels like you've got different kinds of things in each world. That's, I, yeah, that's awesome to hear. Yeah, the, the level design stuff, we're using a, um, a thing in Unity called a tile map editor. Um, and it's like a, uh, basically just building stuff out of little tiles. And our, our tiles are all eight by eight pixels. So they're really small. So, um, I build these um, these tile sets, and then just uh, we kind of paint them around and, and um, kind of sprinkle little details throughout the levels and stuff like that. And it's it's pretty fun to work on. The smoke is a nice touch. Yeah, and if, if um, anybody who's watching wants to play the demo too, you can find it. You can go to um, discord.gg slash twoscoopgames. And if you join our Discord, you can get a link to the, um, there's like a secret link to download the demo. 
Um, I'd love to know what people think, and um, so it's not it's not public, but it's uh, it's available to anybody who joins the Discord. So I love. I mean, first of all, I love that Discord has been so generous with their bandwidth and servers, uh, but just the the extent to which you get all of these, like, really cool small communities just around different, particularly for the indie game scene, it feels like it's becoming, it's kind of becoming, like, the norm that there will be a Discord and also the norm that that Discord will have hundreds of people in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've been joining Discords for games that I'm interested in that are doing, like, Kickstarters or, or whatever. Like, there's this game called X Zodiac that's, like, a spiritual successor to Star Fox it, it, or something like that. I don't I don't know if it's technically that, but it, because it's made by an indie developer, it's not like anybody on the Star Fox team, but it's like, it seems like it's like the best things from Star Fox 64 and the original Star Fox and made into an indie game with like cool, like color palette and stuff. And it's, I've been checking out demos that they post on their Discord. I'm pulling and stuff, this up. And it's, I gotta see what awesome. this looks like. Yeah. EX. Zodiac. X Zodiac. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is a that is a color palette. Hell yeah. Yeah. I'm totally into that game. <laughs> so I'm really excited for that to come out. Oh yeah, that's super smooth. I I I am a huge sucker for like low poly visual aesthetics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it looks great. Oh, the checker. So yeah, I'm on a, I'm on quite a few discords. I, I have trouble keeping up with all of them, but I'm, I've got a lot of. <laughs> I feel like the Discord team does not using it to try to build a community around the game. Like so, mm -hmm. if, uh, you know, hopefully the people in our Discord will be like the champions of the game when it launches and help us spread the word to their friends and all that. Oh yeah, they got the. Sorry, I'm still looking at Exodiac stuff. They have the little pilot pop up and everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, that this actually. This is the new hardest room in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I love this. That actually brings me to a question I've been I've been uh, meaning to ask for a bit. What are y'all playing these days? Where do we what? What are you playing these days? Are you uh, oh. cut out a little bit over the volume? Oh, sorry. What games are What games are we playing? You want to go first, Eric? Um, I'm playing a lot of Deep Rock Galactic with my brother. That game. I love just digging holes and shooting spider space spiders and all the weird stuff you got to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I <laughs> I've been checking that out uh, as well a little bit, just because it's a really good like kind of chill group game. It it feels it almost it's, feels it's fun. Yeah. How there's like there's four different like character classes or whatever, and they all have different styles of play, and it's like. D depending on who you're playing with, you have to like navigate a different way because you have different options available to you depending on who's there. Yeah. And I, I also, um, I don't know, for, for me, it, it scratches a very similar itch to like back when Left 4 Dead 2 first came out. <laughs> and it was like, we're all going to sort of pick our own way to play this game, but we've got this We've got this unified uh, goal, and the game's going to take about thirty to forty minutes. <laughs> it's a nice, it's a nice little balance. Yeah. Uh, I've heard good stuff about that. I haven't tried it yet. I've got like a weekly game night with my brother, and we tend to play a lot of just co-op stuff. You know, it's a way to, for us to keep in touch as adults. <laughs> you know, especially like since I live like three states away from him. Mm -hmm. I guess the most recent stuff that I've played um, was um, Ooblets, uh, which I got for Xbox. 
Um, I actually got an Xbox just so I could play that game because I I on a Mac and so I I can't I can't play it on the Epic Game Store. <laughs> um, and then uh, my wife has been playing um, Horizon Zero Dawn, and I've been watching. And that that game is really cool. That game is really pretty too. <laughs> What was that? Uh, that's also just a really good-looking game. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ooblets has been on my... It's on my yeah. queue. Uh, because it just looks absolutely charming. Even though I'm still not entirely sure what the gameplay is, I don't I don't really care. I'm pretty confident I'll have a good time with it. <laughs> it's kind of like farming and Pokemon put together. Yeah, that's what so I've heard, and that's a winning like combination in my mind. <laughs> yeah. So it's 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 really cool so far. It has a lot of really good, like, funny writing, and, and uh, I really like the, the style. Yeah, the visual design is absolutely incredible. Um, they're just so adorable. <laughs> yeah. I played a little bit of Hyperlight Drifter recently too, and I need to get back to that. That's a that, much harder that game. game. <laughs> really cool. <laughs> um, also, another game that looks this, great. The stage where the arrows you can like shoot back and forth over this cannon forever. Yeah. Really yeah. Cool. <laughs> Little playground room. Yeah, this is one of those levels that you made, Eric, and we just haven't changed anything in it. Like it just worked. It just worked the first time. That, that one's really what fun. Did I just get? Oh, so those um, those are music discs, and those are going to unlock uh, tracks in the sound test um, in the game. So they, we're going to have like a, a old school sound test thing, kind of like in the Sonic games and stuff, where you could just play all the music tracks. Yeah, I miss sound tests. <laughs> <laughs> They're still alive. Oh, Mar games have those. The new uh, Mario collection is going to have one. Nintendo's keeping that whole thing. <laughs> Yeah. They put it in yeah, Smash too, That's like. <laughs> Which Mario has it? The new uh, the collection. New, uh, 3D All-Stars? Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Yeah, the 3D All-Stars, right. Which means I can finally play Super Mario Sunshine after being told I was missing out on it for like a full three generations of consoles. <laughs> yeah, I I haven't played that and I... I... It's good. They kind of skipped the GameCube, and then I had to go back and play that stuff later. I don't even have that excuse. I had a GameCube, and I didn't get Sunshine for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> like, looking back, I have no idea. What, it's, it wasn't a conscious decision. <laughs> Is this the hardest USB in the game right now? The hardest this USB port, hard. USB to get, yeah, yeah. So this this um world is the Moon Caverns, and so that's World Six out of Seven. So that's these levels are going to be pretty far along in the game, so a little tricky by then. So get good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing like the right things. There you go. Uh, okay, this is the way. Yeah, the right idea for sure. <laughs> I believe you got this. The technique is sound. <laughs> yep. Okay, let's see here. Ah! All right. <laughs> this one was really frustrating. The first I'm time I holding it. my breath. <laughs> <laughs> We have a thing where if one of us makes a level 
uh, the other person has to be able to beat it uh, before it goes in. And this one was pretty tough for me the first time. It's a great check. Do you have levels that one of you has designed with the other can't beat? Um, I don't know if that's... One of you can it, beat it. Yeah, we wouldn't... Uh, as far as, like, getting through the level, no. But but um, getting the USB, there was, there was one where I kind of gave up. Uh, but Eric could do it. Um, yeah, if if it's if it's unbeatable by the other per person, we'll usually try to rework it a bit first. Kara got the USB though, right? She did. Yeah. His yeah, wife, is wife is kind of like, like our first play tester. tester. Yeah. She's like the expert on the game. She's better at it than either of us. Yeah. We recent. I recently. Um, Got her to play through all the levels that we have, and it was about an hour and ten minutes for um, for someone who's pretty experienced with the game. I mean, like she's played it as much as I have, so so um, hopefully we're getting there with the content. We're trying to. I mean, like this is the biggest game that we've ever made, so we're shooting for for having like five or six hours for for um, people who have never played it before uh, to try to get through the whole thing. So. Trying to have something like that is it's a lot of work. We had mm -hmm. most of the concepts of like and the mechanics and things for the game working, um, and then just uh, more levels and more levels is like the big thing that we have to do now. Yeah, we spent uh, one night a couple weeks ago just making a gigantic spreadsheet of all of the content and where everything goes. We've got the master planner spreadsheet yeah. <laughs> that's so cool make that public make sure someday that we distribute all the different mechanics and stuff and and use them all because we have a bunch of new stuff and we want to make sure that we're using it enough but then there's some stuff that, that we plan to kind of only have one level with a certain mechanic or something because there's there's weird stuff like if you think back to like mario brothers 3 Everybody remembers that green boot that you could jump in, uh, but that was only in one level in the whole game. Yep. And so it's like, it's fun to have weird little stuff like that. So we want to kind of sprinkle in some of that too. They should make a whole game about USB. the boot. Yeah. Have they ever brought the boot yeah, back? Yeah, that USB. That USB is tricky. <laughs> Have you played through all of them now? I don't know. Let me check. We were we did say that we were shooting for around an hour, so <laughs> yeah. If you've turned them all pink, then oh, it looks like you haven't done this. All one. right, yeah. So one more. Take us home, Mark. <laughs> Are you playing on a controller or the keyboard or what? I'm playing. So I was gonna take home the USB controller, but I find that I'm better with the arrow keys. Okay. And I think it might just be because they're giant arcade buttons and I don't feel like the sensitivity is as good. Mm. But yeah, the game also works with uh, game pads too. Mm. I appreciate how, lo how long he has to fall here before dying. <laughs> yeah. How much time he has to think about his decisions. <laughs> Very tall room. Is it USB or is it? <laughs> it's got to be low, right? That's why the room's so tall. Or it's very high, but I think it's probably low. Because that... <laughs> if I had to guess, I'd say that the, um, the coins at the very end are leading you away from the USB. That's my theory. <laughs> Okay, it does seem like there'd be no way out from down there. I love that the little the little hint of the USB port being at the end worked. <laughs> oh wow. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> you just fall enough, you'll find it. Pro gamer Mark Levac. 
at it again. Hmm. That doesn't seem like it's gonna work. You're gonna have to leave a lot of that last oh, wall up, I think. I've got that USB. It's a little tricky. You have to like leave some blocks to to jump back to. Yeah, it seems like the key is to touch as little of that last wall as possible. Oh, that was really close. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Just a little higher. <laughs> They're a bonus challenge anyway, it's fine. <laughs> and they don't do anything yet. They will. Yeah, we had a, the uh, idea to have like the level select, kind of like in uh, Super Mario World, where if you unlock a bonus level, it'll like appear with a little path on the map. So that's something that we still have to work on. Matt knows this, but you're a new dad. Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> Congrats. That's why this got. Yeah. This was gonna happen back in like May. Yeah. So uh, July first. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's a good one. My daughter was born. Yeah, she's she's been actually really quiet during this whole thing. <laughs> she's just sitting over there with mom playing uh, playing Horizon Zero Dawn. Learning how to tame dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> Learning how to fire a bow good. Yeah. I think that the first video game that she that she uh, heard the sounds from was Kickbot, so that's kind of neat. <laughs> she's not she's not um, aware enough to really focus on anything yet. She's just a little over two months old. But she's absorbing that information, right? Like you're training yeah, someone who's ready for an ecological <laughs> collapse here. Some of that. Yeah. Training every day with a new, a new play controller. tester, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, so that's been an interesting part of this year with uh, working on a game and, and uh, all the crazy stuff that's been going on this year for everybody, but then also also having a having a new new person with us so that's that's been it it's uh it's been working out pretty good so far though it hasn't been hasn't been as uh i don't know a lot of people make you worry that you're never going to sleep again or something like that but we we've, we've been uh, dealing with everything pretty well and we have a really good baby <laughs> A very good baby who is passively learning how to lash a bunch of reeds around an old plasma generator and... hearing the thought process of like trying for it and oh you did it you got it <laughs> nice <laughs> it's, it's usually like 10 tries where i'm like okay <laughs> this room's kind of nuts <laughs> this is one of the fastest rooms i think yeah this is delightful <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and there's a USB in here too. Gotta go fast. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
It's a very Sonic vibe to have the spawn point drop you on a bounce pad. <laughs> In the best way. Yeah, I think that it, it's just been really fun to incorporate all these different mechanics from games that we liked from like the 16-bit era. So it's it's nice to, to see, you know, see people recognize where the stuff comes from. That's cool. We based the, the um, resolution of the game off of um, Game Boy Advance. And so oh, yeah. it's uh, it's 160 pixels tall. Um, we widened it a little bit because uh, we wanted it to be like a, a 16 by 9 ratio. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, kind of going for that Game Boy Advance look. Yeah, also also on my list right now is I need to pick up the Mega Man Zero collection and replay all those GBA Mega Man games. Yeah, so I, I didn't even know about those until recently. Oh, and they're so good. Tell me about them, how good they are, and I need to, I want to get that collection for Switch. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to wall jump a lot, it's a good place to do it. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the original Mega Man X, mm -hmm. and I've heard that the that, that collection is really good too. Yeah, it did it made the interesting choice of having like somewhat similar mechanics to Mega Man X, but adding in like more adding in like this whole weapon swapping thing, but also should you choose to go down this path, it does do like Capcom rankings on every level. So you can try to S rank the whole okay. thing, which is a delightful challenge for me. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's on my list too. I, I've, I, a lot of people that, that play the, at least a couple of people that played Kickbite have, have asked me if I, if I played those. So I wanted to check them out for sure. Yeah, I thought it was just the wall jumping, but now now understanding that I'm looking at something with a similar resolution explains a lot why I was thinking of that game with this. <laughs> yeah, I've looked at I've I've looked at screenshots from those games too, and like like uh, that and Metroid Fusion are mm -hmm. a big inspiration for like color palette and stuff. So I'm, I I have a lot of uh, Game Boy Game Boy Advance games in my like reference folder that I've been looking at. I think Metroid Fusion is the best Metroid game. It's it looks amazing. It's like it's like good, the best looking yeah. Game Boy Advance game. Whoever doesn't agree is wrong, <laughs> objectively. Also, Fusion is like one of the things that I go out of my way to tune into every year at GDQ. Wait, so you like it even more than Metroid Two, Eric? Uh yeah. Metroid Two is really cool, though. Um. I, I things I like about Metroid Two, but Metroid Fusion is pretty great. I mean, I have a soft I have a soft spot for Prime, but I recognize that it's barely a Metroid game. So let me ask you guys: there's a there's going to be another like last level that you haven't uh, released yet for the demo. Or oh yeah, or so so um, world. Uh, uh, World 7 isn't, uh, we haven't shown anything from that world yet because we haven't made anything for it yet. <laughs> but it's also, it's also kind of something that we're going to keep secret until the end because there's a, a bit of a story thing with it. So nice. But we've got, um, we've got the, the world, uh, worlds one through six are, are planned out and those are, those are in the levels that, that you've played today. So we've got all those environments done. For the most part, it's such a fun game. There, there was like levels where it was it was just so delightful to use the mechanic, you know. Um, yeah, it's I don't know. I had a great time. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's a treat for your fingers. I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't ask for anything more than hearing something like that. I mean, that sounds that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Eric did a good job with making making. Uh, making all the mechanics work. Um, so do you guys have like a, a release date or anything like that yet? So we're, we're shooting for sometime around February. Um, 
So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We got a lot to finish, but there's um, there's some stuff that if it lines up right, February would be a, a really good time for us to put the game out. So um, some like platform related things. So hoping that hoping that we can get everything finished. <laughs> We've still got um, like a hundred more levels to make or something like that. <laughs> But, wow. Well, <laughs> but you got them all. You got them all spreadsheeted out, right? We we have. <laughs> there's a lot of things in the spreadsheet, but we have to. There's just yeah. There's just so much more to do. <laughs> We're just shoot, trying to shoot for for making a game that's the same size as you know other games that that people in the that like this genre would would enjoy. So it's like Metro. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Super Meat Boy and Celeste are like seven or eight hour worth of content so we're trying to kind of get it around there are you thinking about doing like the any of the alternate modes that you know like celeste has like all the weird challenges meat boy had the whole like dark dark what was it called hell mode or whatever <laughs> oh yeah hell mode <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, it's, there's a couple of things we talked about, Eric. Would you want to? Well, I mean, the USBs are kind of like unlocking mm -hmm. like ex secret, really pain in the butt levels. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and we had a, a wild idea. Um, it's just nothing more than an idea right now, but we were thinking about seeing if you can play all the levels backwards. <laughs> oh, whoa. <laughs> That's a cool idea. I've done it. I mean, yeah. I took some of the levels and I've gone forwards and then backwards through the same level. So it's it's possible for some of the levels, but beautifully some of them it might simple. Not be. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's something that I'm excited about trying. I think that there's going to have to. I I think that we'll have to go through and edit some of the levels to make it possible. But I think it for the most part it would work. Just have to just have to play test it a lot. <laughs> But that would be a nice way to to get more content out of stuff that we've already made too. Mm -hmm. And then um, we thought about doing like a daily challenge mode where it's kind of like certain rooms in a certain order, and everybody has to try the try to get the best time for that day. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I, it's... I feel like speed runs are. Uh... You know, this this lends itself very good to speedruns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're building yes. some tools specifically for speedrunners. A lot of our playtesters are actual speedrunner people, and they blow my mind with some of the stuff they do to my game. Like, I don't understand how they play it like they do. Yeah. <laughs> but we're gonna we're putting in like you know like a on screen timer and that and like easy restarts and and stuff like that for them, so they can make it easy for them to record a run. You know and like yeah. know when they blew their time or whatever the one speed yeah, run that met, i um met speed runners at most of the shows that we've gone to like i think pixel pop was the first one where we didn't have we had a time for for finishing the demo but uh we didn't have a leaderboard and that so um people at pixel pop they ended up writing their taught their best time on a note card and taping it onto the tv themselves <laughs> and by the end of the by the end of the two-day conference we had basically a tournament had formed where the, the people with the best times were like playing non-stop and trying to beat each other so by that time i knew that this was going to be something that that speedrunners would like so then i've gone around and um found a bunch of different um speedrunners who play similar games on on um, websites that they record their times on and try to reach out to them and try to get people to play the demo and become a beta tester and i've had some really good success with that actually like i just dm'd a bunch of people on twitter and and luckily nobody got too mad at me <laughs> but um I've just been trying to reach out and get as many people to, to try out the game in the part of development that we're in now when we can still change stuff if we need to. And, um, you know, luckily most people, you know, think that it feels pretty good already. So we, they mostly just want more levels. Yeah, I would play so many more levels of this. <laughs> I'm looking forward yeah, to Yeah, well, it. it's... We'll get there and go <laughs> make sure to let you know when it comes out. 
What, um, you guys, what platforms you know do you all play games on the most? Um, I play mostly on like PC, Mac, or Switch. Um, cool. I think, especially a platformer like Celeste, or uh, I didn't play Super Meat Boy on the Switch, but I kind of like the controls on the Switch better than the keyboard. I oscillate randomly between not using my gaming PC for three months and not using my PlayStation for three months. So currently, PC is the big one. But also I'm like playing Dark Souls on it, so with a PlayStation controller, so it doesn't even like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely, definitely coming out on Steam for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And um, we're it's gonna have full controller support. So that'll be the way to go and we're working on getting on the consoles now so so that's going to be to be announced but that's that's uh, something we're trying to do also awesome yeah and i'm a, i'm developing the game on a mac and eric is on linux and so we're we're dedicated to coming out on the platforms that nobody uses <laughs> <laughs> It's perfect though because you also you get the work laptop community with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also feel like everybody forgets Linux, you know? Just have a Linux build. How hard is it? Not me, I never forget it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eric has has uh, how many games do you have in your Steam library right now? I don't know, right like now? 700 <laughs> something like that. <laughs> I think wow. you buy every game that comes out for Linux, right? I try to. I try to. <laughs> Most of them. I'm trying to see if it'll let me sort. See if you get me. to play all this. <laughs> it says I got 919 games. What? <laughs> How many are Linux That's games ridiculous. though? I think Mark, you were about to say something before we started talking about the um, game platforms. Oh yeah, so I know we talked a little bit about hardware interfaces. Would you guys ever want to make this into like an arcade? You have someone to buy it. One player. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, it would be really cool always... if there was a way to to have the. Um, to have like the arcade cabinet or whatever play the, the retail version of the game like everybody like on every other console or whatever or, I mean everything works already with uh, with with uh, arcade pads if you have a two button controller I'll, I'll just make a custom Linux distro that boots right into Kickbot you stick yeah, the USB yeah. in your computer and turn it on and there's Kickbot and that's all it can do that's actually well, that's, how our, that's actually... our um, <laughs> yeah, that's how our kiosk so computers that we did for MacFest work. Like whenever there was a problem, I would just reboot it because it's set up to just start the game automatically and full screen it and everything. So, oh, the and entire we DBA collection. Runs. <laughs> Mark, this would be the perfect game yeah. for the the foot pedal controls. It would actually. Ooh. We have. We've, that I button. tried it with. Oh. Um, Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, we were brainstorming like contactless interfaces and we came out with like these two foot pedals, which is a fun way to play this with two players, I guess. Like one person is left and the other's right. <laughs> kind of, we kind we of did crazy. do that on a controller. We did uh, two people on one controller. And yeah. played it. <laughs> me and, me and um, I think it was jake i think we got through like most of the demo or i think we might have beaten the demo with uh playing with half a controller each <laughs> it was hard i've also set it up to work with the gamecube um, donkey congo uh bongos um, and that, yes. that was really hard to play also <laughs> those things are so squishy and not responsive at all <laughs> yeah yeah they don't respond very well <laughs> I don't know if the ones I got at the thrift store are broken or something, but it didn't work out great. <laughs> I would not trust secondhand Donkey Kongas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, 
Um, this has been really great. Uh, thanks, thanks so much for uh, joining us, Alex and Eric. Thanks for inviting us. Uh, thank you. Um, if there's I appreciate it, appreciate you having our game in the in your arcade before it um, before the world caught on fire. It is still in the game. arcade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so I that remember booth I was has been turned it. into. The, what what happened to that booth? Uh, we're turning it into a VR booth when we can eventually have people inside again. Um, but we will have a rotating arcade cabinet uh, showcasing different games. So it could be back. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, I hope to visit someday. I've never been to uh, New York City or Brooklyn. So that would be, it's on my list to check out. Come back when the arcade's open. Yeah, <laughs> it's a weird, it's a weird time here in New York. It's a weird time here in New York. <laughs> yeah, not trying to do any traveling right now. Um, well, for for uh, any anyone watching either live or on YouTube, uh, remind you to check out discordgg games to uh, check out this demo for yourself, get involved with the community, and that uh, you can wishlist this on Steam at wishlist.kickboxgame.com. Uh, anything else y'all want to plug? That's it. That's the most important stuff for us right now. All We're right. going to try to come out with the game on any platform we can in February. So tell your friends. If you know anybody that likes speedrunning games, um, if you know anybody that likes hard platformers. Anyone who likes pain and swearing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right on. Well, um, th thanks so much for coming. Twitch chat, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back in two weeks, right, Mark? Two weeks with Damaged in Transit. So that'll be a fun one. All right. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. Congratulations, Alex. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Can't wait to see the final game. Mm -hmm. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you, Twitch.